Now, one of the things I've been thinking about very seriously for uh, my uh, receive noise problem is having a separate receive antenna. Um, if you've seen my previous video, and I'll put a link to that at the top of the screen, um, I built an NFED halfway for 80 meters, which starts behind the shed at the very bottom of the garden, goes up to the chimney on the roof of the house, and then back down again into the driveway um, at the front of the house. And the one thing I found is um, it's a very good transmit antenna. The problem is on receive, it also picks up a lot of noise from here in the house and uh, we've got VDSL lines uh, at the front of the house as well. So uh, it seems to pick up a lot of noise. So what I want to try and do is separate my uh, receive and um, have a separate receive antenna as far away from the house as I possibly can at the bottom of the garden. Um, apparently magnetic loop antennas are supposed to be uh, quite good at rejecting noise. So that's something I decided to experiment with. Now the problem with that is that uh, they are very very expensive but I found a cheaper option um, from uh, Cross Country Wireless and it's um, I'm not sponsored by them it's just something I've uh, found and experimented with. They do um, a little uh, box which is basically a loop amplifier and you put your own piece of wire on it. Now this what I've done is I've made myself a little loop antenna and uh, I've run two receive only whisper tests because of course we're not looking at transmit with this this is uh, all about trying to get the noise down on receive so what I've done is I've got the NFED half wave running into my Yaesu FT857 which I've run into my laptop and then um, I've had the uh, loop antenna running via my um, RSP1A, uh, the SDR, into this computer and uh, I've had them both running receive only as uh, whisper test and I've compared the two. So if you can see on this uh, screen here, um, this is what you get from uh, Cross country wireless, it's literally just this uh, little box here, and uh, you put a power, you get a power injector as well, a bias T um, to power it. And uh, see here, I've just mounted it on, um, well, I'll come back to this in a second actually. But this was um, my initial test. Initially, I had it, um, I put this uh, piece of wire in which goes up around here and I've just used garden hose there to uh, give the wire a little bit of rigidity and uh, just used a couple of garden canes um, and stuck it in the ground. So that was my first test and it worked okay but it wasn't great, it was still a bit close to the house. So moving on, this is what we ended up with. I bought some 15 millimeter uh, copper pipe uh, from the uh, local DIY store and uh, basically uh, welded the corners here um, and just made myself, uh, I say a loop, it's a square really, a square was just easier to uh, to build and it, it's roughly about a metre each side um, from you know from left to right and from top to bottom is about a metre and uh, this is just plastic PVC water pipe or drainage pipe in order to hold it. I've just mounted it on top of an aluminium pole and this uh, whole arrangement is actually mounted on uh, the jockey wheel mount on my caravan just as a temporary arrangement in the garden. So uh, that was the experiment and I wanted to see how well the two compared. Now you can argue that this isn't really a fair test because the 857 is an uh, older receiver compared to the RSP1A. I think the uh, SDR's got better filtering in it. And um, of course I'm using completely different sound card, completely different computer, but that's, that's not what we're testing here. What we're testing is, am I better off using the um, NFED half-wave as a receive antenna through my 857 or am I better off just transmitting from the 857 on the uh, NFED half-wave and having a separate loop receiver only antenna um, via the SDR. So 
that's what we're testing. So put aside the fact that it's uh, two totally separate receivers and it's not a fair test between the two antennas. What we're testing is, in my case scenario, which are we better off using? And um, so I've done some uh, whisper tests and um, this is what we came up with. Now this is the uh, loop on 80 meters. Um, so it's done quite well. Uh, this was done yesterday evening. So uh, I don't know, probably about eight o'clock in the evening, something like that. And uh, you know, NVIS all around Europe, it's done you know, quite well. And then if we compare that to um, this is the NFED half wave. Now, around Europe, you've pretty much got the same result. Um, and the signal strengths actually weren't that much different between the two. Um, if anything, the uh, mag loop actually had it um, by sometimes up to 5 dB, but the, for most of the stations, the signal reports were more or less the same. And the one thing I will note is uh, a loop has nulls in the same way that an NFED half wave does. But the way in which these antennas are um, orientated, the nulls are pointing in the same direction. So it's a fair contest in that respect. It's not like I uh, turned the loop to so the nulls were in a different location to the NFED half wave. Um, the obvious thing that stands out is uh, this extra station to um, the States here near New York. Now, these would run, as I say, these two tests were run simultaneously. So uh, the NFED half wave actually got further than the loop did, but it only got the one station out here. Um, what I will note is that the uh, NFED half wave is much higher up because it goes over the roof of the house. Whereas the uh, loop is probably uh, about two and a half meters or so above the ground, so the loop's much lower. So uh, the fact that the uh, NFED half wave is up in the air, clear of the other buildings, might have made the difference. I suspect that if I put the loop higher up, it would probably give a similar result. So, like I said, the signal strengths were when I actually compared the two signal strengths of every station. They were more or less the same. If one was going to be stronger than the other, it would usually be the loop that would be stronger than the NFED half wave. So if anything, I would say the loop actually has it on 80 meters. Now if we go forward to, uh, this is on 40 meters, um, NFED, uh, sorry, this is the loop on uh, 40 meters. So, and this was done just after, almost immediately after the 80 meter test, sort of 10, 15 minutes later. I ran each uh, each test for about half an hour. Um, so again, you know, getting your uh, maybe up to a thousand mile hop here around, um, around Europe or towards the extremities of Europe. And uh, getting into the States as well now on 40 meters, so looking good. And if we go to the NFED half wave, um, not that much difference. Um, roughly about the same around Europe here. Um, going into the States, we've got a bit more DX, gone much further west here. So again, my suspicion is the fact that um, the loop is lower to the ground than the NFED half wave. So that's uh, probably what um, you know what made all the difference on that one. So. Um, Looking at the actual signal strengths between the two antennas, the one thing I did notice is on 40 meters they were much more closely matched. Um, if anything, I would say the NFED half wave on, four, on 40 meters probably had just that tiny edge, but there was, there was scarce little in it, to be honest. It was uh, the difference was negligible. Now, Reading the text on the Cross Country Wireless, and I know Chris from Cross Country Wireless has watched a 
few of my videos so you might pop up in the comments and uh, correct me but reading between the lines on the uh, cross country wireless website I believe the uh, amplifier for the loop is optimized for the lower bands for the lower broadcast bands and hand bands so around about the 160 meter to 80 meter mark so although it's rated up to uh, 30 megahertz so you can use it up to 10 meters that's I think once you go higher up in frequency the performance starts to drop off slightly but um, looking at these figures alone what I'm seeing is um, it's actually performing as well as the NFED half wave on receive but that's not quite the whole story because it's not about signal strength and if I if I understand correctly the way that whisper works it gives you the receive signal strength, the actual signal strength of the signal that you're getting, but it doesn't actually factor in the signal to noise ratio. And this is all about signal to noise ratio because it it's all very well having a good strong receive signal, but if you're also picking up noise as well, then you're going to uh, struggle to pick out the signal. So I also tried this briefly on um, SSB uh, both antennas using the uh, SDR receiver because um, on the SDR Uno, Uno software it actually gives you the uh, signal to noise ratio and the receive strength as well. Now comparing two SSB signals side by side there the one thing I noticed is um, the loop antenna seemed to give a slightly weaker signal for SSB but the signal to noise ratio was better. You were getting better signal to noise ratio. So um, the jury's out on this. I want to um, actually test it more on there before I come to a conclusion. But pr my preliminary conclusion, I think, is actually that the loop using the SDR um, receiver is actually better on receive than... Um, the NFED half wave going straight through the uh, Yesu through the 857D. So uh, I think on balance, this is probably a good, actually a good move and uh, should be uh, beneficial to me. So uh, there you go. There's uh, if you've got a bit of noise at home, there's uh, something for you, uh, for you to try out. And uh, as always, any thoughts, uh, let me know in the comments below.